welcome to White Hat Security's HackerCast, uh, where we talk about the latest trends, interesting current events in the application security industry, to try to bring everybody up to speed week to week on all the things that are going on out there, because it's, uh, it's hard to keep track of. Uh, right now, it's very early in the morning where I am, uh, you know, probably mid-morning where, uh, where Matt and Cuscos are. So uh, Matt is a manager of the Threat Research Center. And uh, Jonathan, I don't, I don't even know what you do these days, other than you're going to Belfast to open up our new office. Yeah, I'm in the transition of going from technical to managerial, so figuring it out as I go at the moment. <laughs> Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so normally, you know, in our in our first uh, hackercast, we talk about lots of different issues, you know, things like that. But uh, this week, today, the only thing that'll matter is something called shell shock a bash vulnerability, and it was released, what, what was it, guys? It released about midday in, a, in the U.S. about. So we're about 12 hours in, and it's been an interesting night, as, as we learn. So, uh, so I'm going to ask uh, Cuscos uh, to walk us through what exactly this is and how it's exploited. Yeah, so first off, there's a strong chance that this is going to be much more severe than Heartbleed. And, like, you know, we can all anticipate that better exploits and proof of concepts are going to come out over the next coming days. So what it is is it's a problem in GNU Bash up to f version 4.3. And what it's going to do is process trailing strings after function definitions in the values of uh, environment variables. So after that, that's going to allow the attacker to execute arbitrary code. Now, what's legitimately scary about this is that it's been around for arguably over 20 years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be the outlier on the graphs for our time to fix, Chair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and the, the exploit complexity for it is extremely low because, you know, there's no authentication necessary. When you're attacking it from the web, it's typically found in CGI scripts, which are pretty predominant in uh, Apache servers, which are, you know... Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere, basically. So, so it's widespread. It's really, really easy. What was the CVE scores? Uh, uh, 10. 10, 10 out of 10. 20 out of 10, it should be. And, and uh, Robert Graham says it's, uh, it's warmable. So we're all coming up to speed on it. And uh, I think it's easy to scan for simply, but the simple stuff, but the... Uh, it seems like we're working on it internally, but it seems like a comprehensive test is going to be rough without a lot of production impact and a lot of requests. So yeah, right now I think the way that uh, we've figured out how to test for it remotely without seeing any traffic or anything, just test for a server being vulnerable to it, is currently not production safe um, because we're afraid it's going to actually break bash by setting these environmental variables and seeing if they come back. So we're still, like we said, it's 12 hours in, so we're still kind of poking at a way to, to figure this out in a, in a safe manner, uh, I think, right? That's the most up-to-date information I have. Yeah, well, no, no. We'll 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 start to uh, scan all customer sites in a few hours, and it'll get more comprehensive over time. Uh, but in the meantime, patch. Everybody watching this, go patch. And 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 unfortunately, it looks like the first patch is broken. So maybe we just got to get rid of uh, batch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you're securing from the website, I mean, easily what you can do if you're running Apache servers is just disable CGI functionality that makes calls to the shell. But in many cases, that's probably going to be a change that breaks portions of your website. But sadly, it's just necessary right now. Yeah, so uh, I, I guess people are saying, uh, one, um, this looks like it could be bigger than Heartbleed. Um, so we'll, we'll see if that turns out. But, uh, but Matt, you're already seeing the, the bad guys taking advantage of this with a command and control uh, system, right? Yeah, we're seeing this in the wild already. I have an example. I can include this in the blog post when we release this. But uh, you know, we're already seeing people from Akamai and Cloudflare post uh, post traffic that they're seeing in the wild. I, I have a GitHub gist here of uh, of another attack in the wild with the IP address that the, is actually uh, using this attack, and it and it's pretty clever. I mean, it's so stinking simple, like Kuzco said. Uh, you know, it's just this attack is just straight up in the in these HTTP headers, and they're just chaining different, uh, you know, like like you said, remote code execution, just yeah. operating system level commands, changing permissions on all sorts of files, uh, and they just have full control over over the server here. Yeah, the exploit uh, question is really just what can an attacker do when they can execute a shell command of their choosing on any vulnerable machine? The sky's the limit. <laughs> Yeah, it's and, and, I, and I think everybody's testing it on using the headers, but I don't think it's the only ones. It's any place where no. that bash takes user supplied input, which was it's, it's yeah. the, the reason that I'm, I think uh, that we're seeing in headers so early is that it's really easy to uh, order a bunch of different. Uh, okay, run this, then run this, then run this, then run this, right? Because yeah. you can have a bunch of different headers in a row, um, and, uh, and you just attack the, the the root path on the server. 
And then they're just running wget commands, and, and they already have a command and control set up. So it's uh, unbelievably fast to get a command and control server for this kind of thing set up. Um, <laughs> the one other thing that uh, I think not a lot of people are talking about, it's kind of missed in the advisory because everybody goes after the web applications, is this affects DHCP as well. Yeah. Right, the DHCPs with a call out to bash, and yeah. I don't think anybody's looking there, but that one sounds pretty bad. Yeah, um, and like Kuzco said, if, if this has been vulnerable for twenty years, I, I mean, how we got to go back and <laughs> and see see what happened, right? Like, I I have, I have to assume that people have to be thinking about that. So the the one thing, uh, you know, we we are. You know, we're good on the browser side. We did a lot of the, in the browser intranet hacking stuff. The one is on the, the Internet of Things uh, subject on, and specifically the internal routers on, on, you know, home networks with the web interfaces. I want to see if we could actually exploit those things from a browser on the internal web interfaces on home routers or other devices. That's, if we do that, that's going to be kind of wild. Today's the day to play with that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it's almost like why even... Right, like you, you we, right now in in this in this hour, everyone has the keys to everyone's kingdom. <laughs> so it's like, holy crap! Okay, uh, yeah, maybe wireless routers are a thing to, to check out in in you know in a few hours when all of a sudden the, the kingdoms start patching their uh, their holes here. So so for White Hat customers, we're we're scanning now. We're to continue to scan better, um, but in the meantime, uh, re please read the blog post. Please patch and start configuring against this thing because the patches are probably going to be incomplete because everybody's uh, rushing and we're still learning on, on this one. Um, so anything interesting that we missed, guys? Because we're going to put uh, some more of the, 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 the best blog posts in the YouTube, uh, in the YouTube comments. Um, we know we're focused on uh, securing web servers, but obviously this is far from just exploiting web servers as well. This is a very, very serious security vulnerability that uh, it, it's going to set a couple things back and... OS X is affected. That's huge. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, even, I don't even know if there's a patch for OS X out yeah, yet. Thankfully, Apple can just remote update that. And right. So they can yeah. consumers when it actually comes out. Yeah, but that's it, exactly. Well, the one I was, the, the one I was, you know, I was watching the uh, when anytime you you print on a Mac, it starts up the internal web server on port six thirty one. So you could hit the Cups web server, your localhost colon port six thirty one. That used to be open by default. Maybe we could still play with it, but you might be able to leverage uh, Shellshock against local Cups web instances, so that might be cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, There's some old school stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's turn this off, let everybody go patch, and uh, I'll catch up with you guys later. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye.